All right, we got some epic trails for you on a Gas Gas Two Stroke 300 with our buddy Greg up in Idaho in some really wet conditions. Got surprised with some rain on one of the days in mid September uh, 2022. Check it out. All right, so for Greg, our buddy, we call him Nine Lives, a little inside uh, you know, nickname there. He was on a four or five day ride trip. Ideally, most people wouldn't want you riding in wet conditions on their trails. Uh, wet conditions on mountain trails, you're kind of just wearing out the trails a little bit more. These guys came a long way and, uh, you know, are going to make sure they go riding. And this storm kind of came out of nowhere on these guys. So that this, this Gas Gas, uh, even though it's a TPI bike, which isn't uh, been my favorite so far, um, Greg's got over 90 hours in this thing and just loving it. And it's his first brand new bike in a few years. Uh, probably six or seven years, right? Yeah, he had a really crappy beta for a long time. <laughs> so, and uh, I think he still kept it in the family, right? Doesn't he, he did, still, yeah. yeah. I think he gave it to like, one of his like uncle or something. I, yeah, yeah, he's got somebody's got it. So anyway, you can tell these trails are just r really fun. <laughs> Greg's always good at commentary about... Uh, and I like that he likes to make sure the camera is wiped off. That's a good That's etiquette a, thing. Yeah. Right. Well, I had to learn that the hard way when we went to Green River our first time. And you we... just ruin a whole trail recording session? Yep. Look at look at that view. Yes. This When they get along this edge right here. The clouds. Oh, yeah, yeah, I looked at it real quickly uh, the other day, and I was like, whoa, that looks awesome. So, I think Idaho is some of our favorite trail riding by far, right. for sure. Everybody's going to ask me where this is, and I don't know. I haven't been there to this spot yet, but I'm going to go next summer. I'm going to find it. It's, and... it's north of Mexico and south of Canada. Right, right. Closer to Canada than Mexico, yeah, but definitely. yeah, that should help you out in finding it. Yep. So one of the nice things I like about Idaho trails as a whole, even though we're heading in, see there's rocks in here, it's nothing like Colorado rocky, you know, trails where you got, you know, third, even some Utah stuff. Yeah, oh, there's tons of Utah stuff that's, you know, very rocky, you know, five, 10 miles rocky. So one of the things I like about this, there, obviously any mountain stuff is going to have rocks. There's just no way around it. Obviously that's part of trail riding in the mountains, but you get these kind of epic views and you can imagine what this would look like uh, when it was, you know not in a cloud but you you here you just don't have in idaho you know a lot of these epic trails don't aren't covered in uh, rock rocks. garden you know rock, yeah not for miles and miles yeah. so just really fun flowy stuff i think one of the reasons these trails stay so nice and are decent is because they get they don't get ridden a lot they don't get ridden by a lot of guys and so i think that's a is something to you know keep in mind is that that's why people don't want to give away a lot of their riding areas because they stay better the less people that ride on them you can hear how smooth that uh, gas gas is as they get higher in elevation. It's still running good. Pretty good bike. Pretty fun trails, huh? They, how how they, they flow and even splashing through the mud. You know, now, well, you gotta be careful on this though. It, it can be pretty slick in spots. Um, Hopefully you get the nice balance of grippy, but not super slick. Right. I know all about too wet with mud. Right. So that's how Spencer, when he was like 13, yeah, we're 14, 13. That's the first time we were, I was like, I think I was like 11 in Ballinger on my 85. Oh, yeah, that? Yeah. Even way, way back, uh, you know. Now, that's a different type of mud. That was like, kind of like what you dealt with the other day. I would have hit him. Right. He, he cut right in front of him. So, uh, we, we learned, you know, on the 85, digging mud out of the wheels and all that. And that helped you for your uh, dual sport the other night. The other night, where mm -hmm. I had to take the fork guards off to get up You couldn't move the front the wheel. Yeah. yeah. Front wheel seized up. So the, that bike has survived, luckily, and didn't even smoke the clutch. I was I inspected the wasn't, clutch the other day. It wasn't too bad. It has the recluse torque drive in there, and man, that Spencer says it. And he the fork seals it. haven't the uh, knock on wood haven't haven't leaked yet. yet. And I think the key to that was that he washed it that night at from midnight to it was like twelve thirty to two. It was like 30. yeah, two thirty, twelve thirty, two thirty. Like two hours at the car wash. And then I came back to the house. It did prep on it then. So yeah, so that's the key is you know when you get into some terrible conditions like that for those that saw that video um, and even when it's muddy like in this video oh, you yeah. still want to prep your bike that night even if you maybe don't have access to a car wash you want to be spraying do you lube. think do you think these guys no went to a car they, wash? Did, they did not wash them <laughs> i know for a fact they didn't they left these things dirty like this until they got home to utah but all right greg will let us know if they did if they went to the car wash and washed them and blowed them off and they should have right but yeah. i don't i don't yeah. But look how awesome they, they stay in the trail clearing. W one of the problems um, in these places need constant trail clearing because we ran into a guy in Idaho and close to some of these trails, I believe, and he would he cut down 550 something trees by 
was the middle of July it was or like, something? It was like almost end July, yeah. He, he had already cut down that many trees. He keeps a little ticker on his bars and counts how many trees he cuts down or cuts out of the trail. So there's some good, good people in Idaho, uh, and there's some good groups to support that maintain these trails. So There's a few rider associations that you can join if you live in Idaho and you want to find good trails. And I guess even if you don't live in Idaho, you should probably you, you contribute. Could, yeah, yeah, you could still volunteer time if you go up there a lot. Yeah, and uh, and if you don't have the time, maybe we should just donate some money to these groups. Yeah, Though he sent me. He gave me a card. We saved it in that one, so that's something we'll have to look at doing for those groups. So you can see how fun these trails are. It's just epic. And so in some of these areas in Idaho, I know these guys. I know guys that are riding seven days in a row and never rode the same trail twice. And these are guys putting on a decent amount of miles, anywhere from you know 50 to 70 kind of of single track like this. They're doing this kind of many miles a day, and they do sit down a lot. Oh, these guys? Yeah. If you're not, no, yeah. but I'm talking about my other guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what's wrong with sitting down, Spence? Uh, it's, it's, it's really not good for you. <laughs> yeah. See, he stands up for those whoops and then wait. He'll sit back down soon. Yeah, yeah. there it is. <laughs> oh, he stood, he stood back up. They're doing good. <laughs> that doesn't suck, as he said. I can't argue with that. That's pretty awesome. That is really cool. Those exposed roots can be a little tricky sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, these, these views, when you get to the top of some of these... Uh, these mountains out there can just be awesome. We're gonna have to get up there this summer, coming up here. Um, I think it's probably too late this season to risk it. Uh, I don't know if we have any time, but I would sure love to. But I, I got a two stroke I'm fixing up now. My old two stroke, my TX300. So I might be riding a two stroke with some of this stuff next time. I say that and then I probably won't. Then you'll be like, oh, I love my, or, or you'll have me hop on the two-stroke, or right. you can ride my 350. Right. Yeah. The cat, the bike caddy, we called it. Yep. Now, in here, the, I could see this being really slick. Mm-hmm. And some spots here. He's slowing down a little bit. Yeah, I don't blame him. For so, sure. my TX300 carburetor, I, I, I do have the new Billetron uh, Electron on there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. A little slow mo of the. Uh, yeah, it is a little bit close there. Near disaster. That's why you need a horn. <laughs> Be honking as I'm coming up. It's a tight yeah. fit. I don't know if they're going to see much wildlife on a, when a rainy day. Probably not. We see lots of wildlife. He's also not leading right now, so usually the guy in front sees it. Yeah. Sees it. He's got one guy ahead of him. This trail just looks awesome. Mmm. Snaking up. Oh, he could go for the pass here if he catches up. Yeah. So why does that come through our head? Because we're, we're more moto guys. So yeah. as soon as we see that, hey, we're like, hey, we can pass that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're saying as mm -hmm. soon as you see that guy? Yeah. Do you think, I, I think, think, I think, think it's, Greg's thinking the same thing? No, definitely no. not. Stop. He, he'll get close to him. He's too nice, usually. Maybe this is trail boss. Maybe the guy in front of Greg oh, that's is true. trail. He could, he could be the good guy. Yeah, because so you, the proper trail, ed, trail etiquette would be, you know, the guy that's showing you around. He's trail trail guide, trail boss. Um, he might uh, have a little rule like, hey, yeah, you got to stay behind me. He wants to be the guy, especially if it's dusty. He wants to be the guy out front. You got to follow me. Um, I don't know if we follow those rules because as soon as somebody leaves a gap, then somebody's in front or, or working their way right there. I think dudes have a hard time with the concept of, you know, like, Especially moto-minded guys of of just waiting, chillaxing, maybe, which is something I fall victim to too. Cool rockfall area. Yeah, I think this would be even a lot better if it was dry. Mm -hmm. You could go a lot faster through here; be a little fun. Um, and I'm just impressed with how little uh, mm -hmm. deadfall I see across the trail. You can see how much trees are off to the side of the trail, so they definitely. Are, are doing a lot of trail clearing regularly on this trail. Uh, you know, keeping these things. Oh, there's two two strokes. We got a white one right there, huh? Mm -hmm. They're all bunched up. I think later in the day I like the two stroke. But see, the last time I went through this my uh, before I went back to 350s, mm -hmm. then I would bring the 300 and show. Oh, what's what is this little lake? Yeah, wow, that looks cool. Wow, that's awesome. The colors are so bright green, 
I think on cloudy days it looks even more bright with the, the foliage. So they just mowed on right around this lake? Okay. So when we were taking up the last few times, trail trips, before I sold my last 300, my 19, um, I would bring the 300, I'd ride it for like a half hour, an hour, and then I'd have Spencer ride it, like, oh, we're going to trade off, and then I'd be on the 350 the rest of the day. Yeah. Pretty much, right? A lot of the day, yeah. So that, so then I uh, just said, well, I should just sell the 300. Yeah. I'm not riding it. And they're also, they're also worth too much, you know, not sell them sometimes. Ooh, nice. I think when we went to Idaho, we had some of the deepest river crossings ever, but well, that's a cool bridge. Yeah, they've Look done at a that. couple of those. Man, that's a lot. Of, they're, they're doing a good job maintaining this trail. I mean, those bridges are insane. Um, that makes it really nice. You're not you're ha having to chew it up crossing that little creek. What's nice in that, that gas gas, you just, you just putt, man. Whoa. I'm not sure if he's running a gummy tire or not, but sure be nice uh, on that stuff. Gosh, you see how many trees are off to the side? Like, it's like, you know, pickup sticks. <laughs> pickup sticks, look at that. Like... Years of work to make it not be covered in trail, right? Right. People don't realize they don't live out west at all. When they go to these mountains, um, whenever you get off the trail, you find out how many tr trees are down. Are really down, yeah. Yeah, you can't. You know, we found out the hard way on some stuff where we've gotten off trail, and it, it can be a just a disaster. So, you want to stay on trail, obviously. Onyx helps us with that a lot. That's been awesome. Um, but you want to stay on the trail, and if you can help clear trail, a lot of times we can physically move some stuff, and then we can cut smaller stuff. We don't usually have a chainsaw with us, but we have a what's that thing called? That little gum boy? They had the gum boy. It's like a saw from Japan. You can get them on Amazon. So, they, so that works well. We keep that in Spencer's pack. Mm -hmm. His pack can weigh more than mine. Yeah. So, yeah, I would have one of those with you when you're doing this mountain stuff. Um, I've taken a, I've hit in some of these uh, trees on to my handguard, and then it hit me in the gut and mm -hmm. the bars when it hit me. You know, when I was, man, that was a tough one. So, when these trees are hanging off to the side, sometimes they can be a little closer than you think, or they've fallen down, and they're like at handlebar or gut <laughs> height. You know. I think it's always the best sound in the world when you're on this trail mm -hmm. and you think a, like a stump down low is going to hit your foot. So you lift one of your feet up and then you hear your foot peg go clip and click, then click. I like, love oh, it. Oh, that's awesome. I do. I, I love that sound. This is as much gas. That's why these 300s really don't use a lot of gas, even the you know the carb ones, because you're just cruising. Burp, 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 burp. Water's all nice and clean. We went not too far from this area, we think, this summer, and man, it was awesome. A uh, little warm. It can get plenty warm up there, but when you get up higher, totally nice. You know, you don't even need just a jersey, maybe a t-shirt underneath or a, or a vest on. That's all you really need. Man, uh, thanks to Greg for, you know, filming this cool uh, footage. Um, and hopefully you enjoy, man, and listen to this two-stroke. You can listen to this thing uh, finish off. Mm -hmm.